Hello, it's Mr. Gale, and we're going to look at an APR example where we have to repay the money in equal amounts each time. So here's my example. Uh, boiler's broken down, and I need to borrow £1,500. I've got a loan that charges 5.5% APR, and I've taken that loan out for two years. And I'm going to have to pay some money back at the end of the first year and the rest at the end of the second year. How much will those repayments be? Now, again, bear in mind that these sorts of questions, realistically, this would probably be a monthly repayment kind of question, really. But for the sake of making it manageable in a reasonable length of time, we're just going to take two repayments over the course of two years. So here's our APR formula. What things here do we know? Well, yep, the loan was 1,500. M is how many repayments there's going to be. Well, that'll be two. Um, I is the APR, so it was 5.5%, which is 0 0.055. A, K is the amount of the repayment each time. Well, we don't know that. That's what we're trying to work out. And then T is the interval in years between the start of the loan and that repayment. So at the first repayment, T will be one, because it's one year since the start of the loan. And at the second repayment, T will be two. So that bit of the formula is do each of the separate fractions repeatedly from one up to however many repayments there are, well, two this time, and then add them up. Let's think about the first one then. So for the first repayment, it happens at the end of the first year. So we can just put in the brackets down the bottom, one plus 0 0.055, that's fine. The power of one, because it's the time since the start of the loan. Well, if it's the end of the first year, that means that it's one year since the end the start of the loan. And A1 is the amount of the rest of payment, and we don't know what that is yet. The second one, pretty similar to be honest, the interest rate doesn't change. The time since the start of the loan, well, this is at the end of the second year. So that index there is a two, and we don't know what the second repayment is. Uh, if we were taking this out over three years or four years or five years, then you'd have a third fraction and a fourth fraction and so on, depends how many times. Or even if the repayments were being paid sort of every six months or something, we might end up with more fractions. But for this one, there's just going to be two. So that sigma notation is once you've got those different bits, add them together, or at least put a plus sign in, and say that that's equal to the total amount borrowed. And this is an equation that we can solve. Uh, just because the two repayments, A1, if I just go back a bit, A1 and A2, well, those are the repayments at the end of the first year and the repayment at the end of the second year. But because we know that they're going to be equal installments, those are going to be the same each time. So they're the same. We can just call them the same thing. And it's easier just to say, well, let's just call that A, then the amount that we have to repay. How are we going to solve that equation, though? Well, I think having those, uh, so in the denominators, having it as 1 plus 0 0.055, we may as well just do that calculation. 1.055 to the power of 1, well, that's just 1.055. And then this one is squared. OK, so that's made it a little bit tidier. Just before we look at how to solve that, I'm going to look at another similar question, but with a nicer uh, set of numbers, basically. So I'm just looking at solving this equation. You can see it's very similar. Instead of A's, I'm using X's. Instead of 1,500, I've just gone with 12 because it's a nicer number for what we're doing here. Instead of 1.055, I'm just picking 5. So one of them is 5, and the other one is 5 squared. And I think about how would I go about solving this? Because we can think about what we do here, and then we'll apply it back to the more complicated one. So with these are fractions, having different denominators is a bit of a pain. So I want to fix that. I want to make them have the same denominator. And 5 squared, I can turn 5 into 5 squared by timesing it by 5. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 5 over 5. That's perfectly allowed because 5 over 5 is just 1. Multiplying by 1 won't change it, but it will make it look different. And also will give me common denominators here. So this 5 times 5 becomes 5 squared. And the top x times 5 is 5x. So I've changed that here, getting common denominators. And I did that by multiplying the top and bottom of the first fraction by the denominator. And that's made the denominators on both fractions match. Now they're both 5 squared. I don't actually want the fraction. I would rather get rid of this 5 squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by 5 squared. 
So if I multiply this side by 5 squared, it's 5 squared times 12, that's fine. If I multiply this by 5 squared, 5x divided by 5 squared and then times by 5 squared cancels each other out and you're left with 5x. And this one, x divided by 5 squared, but then times by 5 squared cancels out again and you're left with x. This is now much, much nicer. We can do 5 squared times 12, it's 25 times 12, which is 300, and 5x plus x is 6x. And this step here, 6 times x is 500, so we can divide by 6. We can do 300 divided by 6, and that will tell us that x needs to be 50. So it's very much not obvious back up here, but if you do 50 divided by 5 plus 50 divided by 5 squared, you do indeed get 12. 50 divided by 5 is 10. 50 divided by 25 is uh, 2. So you've got 10 plus 2. Right, so let's use those steps back over here. So we looked to get common denominators. We multiplied through by the denominator, and then we divided by however many, whatever, whatever number is in front of the letter here. Right, back to this one then. So they don't have common denominators. Can you remember what we did? Well, last time I multiplied the top and the bottom by five, but that's because the denominator was five. So here it's 1.055. I'm going to do that. Multiply the top and bottom by 1.055. And that tidies up to this. So we've now got common denominators. The top does look a little bit unpleasant. It's certainly worse than the example just now, but 1.055 A's, and this is 1 A. Not that we've written the one, but that's 1 A. Okay, what's next? Well, next we multiplied through by the denominator, multiplied everything by that denominator. Okay, everything by 1.055 squared. So although that's awkward, and my calculator can just do that, this bit here, 1.055a plus another a, that's going to give me 2.055as. It's actually quite difficult. I haven't done that sort of thing before, but it makes sense. One and a bit a's add another a gives me two and a bit a's. This bit, I just used that on the calculator. I don't, couldn't do that in my head, certainly. All right, nearly there. 1669.5375 is equal to 2.055 A's. How do we get the A? Well, just divide through by 2.055. Definitely want to do that on the calculator, obviously. And that means that my repayments are £812.43. Uh, it's probably easiest where possible to keep more things on the calculator and use the answer button rather than writing them down and then pressing clear and then typing them in again. You may as well just get used to using the answer button where possible. Right, just a summary then. So I have to pay back 812 pounds 43 pence. I have to do that twice. So in total, I'm paying back this. Uh, and I borrowed 1,500 pounds. We've actually answered the question, how much were the repayments as 812 pounds 43 pence? That's actually the answer to the question. Um, I'm just putting this bonus in. It could be a part B. What percentage have you ended up paying in interest? Well, although it was a 5.5% loan for two years, we ended up paying 124 pounds 86 pence more divided by the original amount times by 100 gives you 8.32%. It's very, very, very difficult to figure that out without going through all those steps. In fact, I'm not even sure how to do it. So you can't really look at something like 5.5 and go, oh, it's over two years. Mm, do you know what? That's going to be 8.32. Yeah, not going to happen. So you have to go through the steps if you get asked that. Here are some questions for you. For each of the following loans, what's the repayment and what would be paid if they are yearly equal instalments. So if I borrow £1,500 over two years, repaying an amount at the end of each year with an APR of 4.4%. So that's very similar to the one we just did, just a different APR. Same here, similar sort of thing, different APR. Slight change again this time, different APR, still two years, but different amount borrowed. And then here we're back to same amount borrowed as the example, same APR, but another three years. And then there's one last one there. You definitely want to pause this now, do these questions, and then you can come back and check your answers on the next slide. OK, so I hope you have done these questions. Those are my answers. You can obviously pause this and check those as well. And thanks for watching.